Hi, and welcome to this presentation of the World Weaver workflows, because there are several of them that I'm going to show today. And this is the second time I start with this because my computer apparently couldn't handle everything, so it just crashed. I'm not going to go through it in detail, but I will explain briefly what it does. This is the prompt helper. This step is completely optional. If you feel that you have the ideas on how to fill out this yourself, that's fine, you can do that. If not, you can put an input image here and you get an output over here. It should be noted that the image you upload here that creates the prompt will not create exactly the same image when the prompt is used later. It will just help you structure something that is similar to this image. So it's not a photocopier. Anyway, once you have this prompt, you can proceed to the Genesis Pre-LoRa workflow. This step is also optional because this is just a way to test your new prompt before you decide to save your character to the database. I created this before my computer crashed, so I'm not going to do it again. But this is the result from the prompt that we got here in the prompt helper. I feel that I'm okay with this. This is fine. In the next step, we move to the character database builder. We copy the whole prompt and paste it here. I tend to only keep the basic hair, such as color, and add placeholders for the hairstyle, accessories, and also for the clothing. We also have to name our character, and I've named this one Linda. By setting the Save to Database to True, Linda will now be saved on our database and can be retrieved at any time. To update the database, we will have to restart Comfy UI and refresh the node definitions. For the next step, we move on to the World Weaver Flux workflow to run our first test. With Comfy UI restarted and the node definitions refreshed, Linda will now show up in the drop down menu in the Character Select node. In the Character Select node, we are giving Linda a yellow sundress and a messy bun hairstyle. We will also decide the shot type, action, and place that the final image should include. As shot type, I've chosen medium shot at shoulder height and her action is sitting alone and reading a book. And where she is doing this is under a great big oak. You might ask why we're using double API nodes, shouldn't one be enough? The purpose for this is that the first API node is exclusively handling the character part of the prompt, while the second is creating a prompt for the setting. This is to ensure that the character consistency won't be influenced by words bleeding from the settings to the character. To use the Gemini API nodes, you will have to obtain an API key from Google. The key is free and comes with a generous amount of free API calls. While editing this video, I will speed up some segments so we're not just sitting here in silence watching the progress bar together. Now, in just a moment, we should see Linda. There she is, hello Linda. She is sitting under an oak reading a book. And yeah, I think it's the same person pretty much. She has a different hairstyle that we prompted for and she has a bit of the flux chin that comes with using the flux model. The style is a bit different from the Genesis workflow and that's because the images were made using different models that are trained in different ways. So it will not look exactly the same thing from one model to another but using the same model and change the scene and clothes as the only variants, you will retain the character consistency between images, regardless of what settings and clothings you choose. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you want more videos like this, comment and let me know.